Okay, so we have uh, in question 122, we're presented with a situation where, where we are, we are uh, long a forward contract and long a put at the same strike price. And we need to describe the payoff and the profit from that situation. And the best way to do it, of course, is with payoff and profit chart. So let's put the long uh, forward in there. And you recall the long forward is just uh, a uh, linear relationship with the price of the underlying. Let's put the long put in there. And you'll recall that the long put offers us uh, a no payoff if the price ends above the strike price, simply because we would never exercise the option. Why would we sell something for K when we could sell it for significantly more? Where the put pays off is when the price falls below uh, below the strike price. Let's see if I can get the right angle in here. 45 degrees. There we go. We'll let the right angle in. So there is our payoff from the two. So we can combine these two. Notice that as we lose here, we lose here. These two uh, um, cancel each other out. So up to K our payoff will look like that. After K, uh, if we add the two lines together, we get just that. So that is our payoff. However, while the forward was free to enter into, the put had a price. The put had a price of P naught. So we paid P naught. So while this is our payoff, our profit drops right across the whole, the whole graph by P naught. We just shift the line straight downwards by the price of P naught. So our profit looks like that. Our payoff looks like this. Try not to get confused between payoff and profit. So this uh, next question, I've, I've, uh, in every chapter I'm going to try to give you a very challenging question, one that you probably cannot answer. Uh, but this comes from uh, the back of chapter 1, 1 1.23, and deals with something called an index currency option note, or an icon. And it describes what the icon is, and it describes the particular icon that we're looking at. Um, and here's the payoff from this particular icon. If the uh, US.yen uh, exchange rate uh, is greater than 1.69, now I'm going to talk about this greater than in a minute, because that's very misleading. But let's just go with that. If the number is greater than 169. Let's say that. If this number is greater than 169, the bond pays $1,000. If it's between 8450 and 169, the bond pays off this way. And if it's less than 8450, the bond pays zero. So let's do a payoff chart for this first. So let's put in 8450 and we'll put in 169. So if and uh, we'll put uh, 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 the yen along here. If we're at 169 or higher, the bond pays 1,000. So we can go to here and say the bond pays 1,000. If it is less than 8450, the bond pays zero. The bond pays zero. And then, of course, the bond pays off this way in between. And you'll find that no matter how uh, what, what number you select for ST, it'll fall along a line that looks like this. So there's the payoff from this icon. Uh, there's the payoff. Now, here's the hard part, and it should be very difficult for you to answer this. If you can get this on your own, if you can get this, um, you're doing really, really well. Here's the thing, though. There was not enough information in Chapter 1 for you to really get this. There's not enough information in Chapter 1 for you to get this. Uh, there is a middle step, of, well, kind of an, I shouldn't say middle, an early step, that if you don't use that early step, it becomes very difficult to figure out. Show that this icon is a combination of a bond and two options. So that this whole thing that we've done, we need to select a bond and two options so that we get the same payoff. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the issue that you should note right away. We have a bond, a $1,000 bond. So our payoff is 1000 minus whatever happens in here. You'll notice that if the yen is at 169, what happens in here? We get 169 over 169, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, which is 0. 
So it would be 1,000 minus 0, which is 1,000. So we can see that that actually works out. When we drew the payoff, we drew it like this, where we had 8450 and we had 169, which you're sort of drawn into that, and that seems to be the way that uh, uh, the question makes sense. But we have a problem because we said the payoff was 1,000. So we have dollars here, but we have yen here. That's going to be very difficult to do. It's better if we have dollars and dollars. So what I want to do is I want to show you something here. Let's say that uh, uh, if we're quoting this right now at 169, what we're really saying is the exchange rate looks like this. JPY equals 169. That's the statement we're making. Remember, one US dollar buys 169 yen. One US dollar buys 169 yen. I want to express it this way. And if we express it this way, this question becomes easy to solve. If you try to solve it this way, while you can draw out something that solves it, you then have to put negative signs in front of everything you drew to turn puts into calls. We don't want to do that. So let's just flip it around. We'll write it this way. And if we write it this way, what's it going to look like? 1 over 169. There you go. So let me ask you, if we're drawing it from the origin, we'd normally label that as 0, and we'd put larger numbers going out this way. Here's 1 over 169. Here's the other number, 1 over 84.5, which is the larger number. Doesn't take much to see that 1 over 84.5 is the larger number and 1 over 169 is the smaller number. So on my payoff, if I go here and I put 1 over 169 and I go here and I put 1 over 84.5, that means that as we keep moving this way, the yen is getting stronger. The yen is getting stronger. When we drew the payoff chart the first time, we had it running this way, which means the yen is getting weaker in this direction. If the yen uh, goes to 200, what are we saying? We're saying that one US dollar now buys 200 yen. If it went to 84.5, then one US dollar only buys 84.5, which means the US is weakening, the yen is strengthening. So we want to write it in that same way. Now, if we do this, notice that we flip these things around. What do we have now? Well, we have to change it around to look like this. There's the payoff that we want. It's just flipped around. Do you see what I've done? I've just flipped it around. So I've made this 1 over 169, and I made this 1 over 84.5, which is the same thing as this, except rather than the yen getting weaker, I've made it such that it is getting stronger. I've started from 1 over... Uh, uh, um, one over one million, let's say that's 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 a U.S. that's that's almost zero in terms of U.S. dollars to a very strong yen. Eventually, we get to one over one, where the yen is on par with the U.S. dollar, right? If the denominator gets smaller, so I've just turned it around. Now, in turning it around, you're going to see how easy how easy it becomes to solve this. Now, that's all I need to do is solve this. I need to create a payoff chart that looks like this. So, let's begin with my bond. I got a regular thousand dollar bond. So let's get a zero line here. Whoops. And let's draw my bond. There we go. So at this point here at 1 over 169, I have to start bringing this line downwards. I have to start bringing this line downwards. So let's do that. Let's take something and let's bring that line down. There we go. We'll bring that line down. So this will bring this line down to here. But once I get to here, I need to straighten out this line. So I have to do something at this point to straighten out that line. Well, if I go down to here and I draw a straight line across here, if I just do this, oh, that's, that's just a proxy for this. I can see that I can negate this downside by simply having something up here. There we go. So there, I've drawn it out. Now my payoff is going to look like this. So from here to here, there is nothing, right? Then this particular line that I drew, which I should do this uh, right across here, this particular line that I drew starts losing money while this stays constant, so it's going to start dragging this one down all the way to here. 
Now, once it gets here, it's going to continue to lose money. So it normally would continue to drag this down, except now this one starts to drag it back up. So the rise here negates the loss here. And this is still a straight line, so we should get a straight line here. So that will be across here, down here, and across here. Does it look like this? Yes, it does. Great. Now all I have to do is describe what I have. I have a bond. And this looks like I have sold a call. Why? Because as the price keeps going up, if I sold a call, I would lose money. So this looks like I sold one call. So sell one call at 1 over 169. 1 over 169. I sold a call uh, for 1,000 US dollars. And of course, I'm selling the call at 1 over 169. That's the same as 0 0.00. .00 5917. Here, what does it look like I've done? Well, if I bought a call, it wouldn't really pay off until we got to here, and then it would start earning money. So I buy one call at 1 over 84.5, again, for 1,000 US dollars. And this, uh, this point here is the same as 0 0.01182. Three, four. Notice I've gone from 0, 0, 005 to 0, 01, so the number is getting larger. So I buy, I own the thousand dollar bond. I will sell a call uh, on the uh, US yen exchange rate at, at this US price per yen, this US price per yen, and I will buy a call at this US price for yen. Everything is in US dollars. I've now got this payoff. Unless you got that little thing about the yen, unless you were able to say, hang on a second, what if I reverse it instead of counting from 0 to 169 from the origin, I turned it into US dollars and went this way, suddenly it was easier. All you got to do is, is start from the origin and say, okay, well, I need to get this payoff, so I'll follow along to here. Now here, since it dives, I must have something that dives. Since at this point, since it goes straight, I must have something that negates this to the upside. You just you could just walk this way across. Having it like this, you have to walk inwards, which means you'd flip these around, thereby making it look like you have puts. But if you've got puts on the yen side of it, that means you've got calls on the American side of it. Remember, they trade in pairs. And that would be that that translation would have been harder than just translating the currency right away. Now, this should have been a challenging question. Once you figured out the currency, the option part wasn't challenging. So it's early, I think, in the book to have this question. If you haven't had any currency experience, you wouldn't have picked up on that right away. Now that I've shown you, go, okay, yeah, yeah, I see that. But without it at first, uh, you probably would have struggled with this question for quite some time, saying, I can't, I can't figure out how it's done. And it would have been challenging until you flip it around.